Hello everyone and welcome to the second session of the Illustrator Sessions. This is a space for asking the experts anything you like in a safe environment driven by students. Please keep your cameras and microphones off during the session. If you have any questions during, um, use the chat function to ask them and I'll be keeping an eye on this throughout. Um, Caroline is working behind the scenes in this session and I just wanted to thank her for all that she's done to make the session possible. There she is. <laughs> um, so for any of you who don't know, um, I'm Jess Holloway, I'm a third year illustration student. Um, but first and foremost, um, let me give you a quick introduction to our guest speakers today. Um, so we have Warren Curry and James Gray, who are both illustration alumni. So Warren Curry is an illustrator from Northern Ireland. He is currently based in London. He studied illustration at Plymouth College of Art and graduated with a first class honours and was also featured in Creative Block's Best Graduates Outside of London. For the first year after graduating, he was represented by Inky Illustration Agency, doing editorial work for Culture Trip and surface design for Harrods. He currently works in-house as an in-house illustrator for Four Pure Brewing Company. I hope I said that bit right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. yeah. um, and James Ray is a designer from the UK, currently freelancing from the island of Mallorca. After completing his illustration degree, he started work as an in-house designer for a small startup that relocated him to Barcelona. After three years of creating visual identities for various small startups, he used, he used the contacts and experience gained to go freelance, taking on a broader range of design and illustration jobs, working from wherever there's Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, so, not many places. Not many. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll kick things off with Warren's presentation, if that's okay. Yeah, I spent like the majority of my third year kind of refining my style and just kind of figuring out what I was going to do next. Like towards the start of my whole degree, like everything I did was hand-drawn. Like that was kind of my focus and that was kind of what I thought I wanted to do. But it wasn't until around the third year when I started to focus on what I wanted to do as a postgraduate and I wanted to... My main focus was always getting an in-house design job. So that's when I started realizing like a lot of places, like it's a requirement that you learn all these Adobe products. So like before when I was just hand drawn everything, I moved on to Photoshop and like all my work was created in Photoshop predominantly. But like once before I started my final major, I was like, I need to learn Illustrator. So I spent both my, my final major was kind of a learning project and Illustrator and then just figuring out looking for clients I would like particularly like to work for so like it kind of kept in mind people I could approach after I graduate so for like this one was like a series of posters I created from a final major that I kind of thought maybe I could work for someone like SDA Travel and I could pitch to them and then I always liked uh, Little White Lies so I started to make film posters and stuff like that that I could think of like working for people like that. So it was kind of around here where I started to kind of figure out how I like to work and it was like predominantly digital. So for anyone who's like seen my work recently, it more looks along these lines in comparison to like the old really fine line hand drawn work. And then, so the final major was those three, those three travel posters, three movie posters. The idea behind the movie posters was kind of like if I could create a series of icons that would make the film identifiable, even if I had the name at the bottom away, people would still know what it was from. So I did that and then I created a comic book, which was kind of more of like a passion project more than anything. Cause like for long-term goals for me, I've kind of been thinking that's kind of what I want to do, get into comic books. Whereas I've kind of just been using all this time now just to be be a better illustrator before I can confidently be like, okay, let's move into doing that. So yeah, that was kind of pretty much my third year. And then after graduating, I kind of, I was like, so my, my, this, this piece on the left, the London hand drawn piece was brought to new designers when I was in second year. And it was spotted there by Harrods who kind of got in contact with me. And I kind of pitched this idea to them, this this piece, so they could buy it on tote bags and everything like that. And that time it didn't go ahead. And so they kind of work in like six month block periods. So I kind of pitched that and it didn't go ahead. So I waited until the next six months, which kind of happened to roll around 
into when I was at New Designers myself. And I met Jean, who was like the, I guess, like a scouting illustration agent there again. So I got the opportunity to go to Harrods, have like a um, portfolio review with them and then pitch this image on the right. And then they did go with this one on the right with a few more refinements because for whatever reason, Harrods are such a huge company and there's certain things you can use, like the the red telephone box and everything like that had to be taken out. Little things like that that are kind of weird copyright lines that you'd never even knew existed. So that was the first, my first kind of big client that I was just kind of lucky that they kind of approached me on that because I would have had no real clue <laughs> of how, how, how to get in contact or, or conversate with, with Harrods otherwise. And then because like, like Jess mentioned at the start, I was featured in creative blogs, press graduates outside of London. And this is where culture trip here, kind of like a, like a travel, travel articles based editorial website. They seen my work on there. I got the chance to do like three editorial articles for them. And this is one of the pieces from that, which was, I think it was about 10, 10 events that had helped shape London. And this was the, Black Plague, I think. But yeah, and thinking back, I, I, like I haven't done much editorial work since then, but I think I did like nine, nine images for them. And this is kind of the only one I can look back on and be like, oh, that's okay. Everything else is like, delete that from the portfolio. Um, but yeah, that was my kind of first, first for the, for the first six months after graduate, and that's the kind of big jobs that I had. And then for some of the stuff I always wanted to create, like um, gig posters and stuff for musicians because like, that's I never ever am illustrating or doing anything without listening to music so I didn't have any contacts in any shape or form to music apart from like there was a few local artists from home in Derry and I just kind of took the initiative myself just to illustrate this terror poster and just sent it to him and then they really liked it and then I got a few more jobs out of that for rolling out to his album lunch and stuff and a local magazine, I think, posted about it. And my, this image on the right was like the front page cover. So there was some stuff like that. I think it's good if you know anyone like and that are in bands and stuff, it's good to just get to terms with working with them. So it's a nice, easy kind of entryway into that, which is fun. Then, because, like I said, my main goal was getting an in-house job. And then this Mary Mary, I worked for them for a year. I got a job as a creative art worker. So I worked there for a year. And because I kind of only wanted to get any creative job after graduating, this kind of had me satisfied for like six months before I kind of started to get the itch to be like creative again, rather than just kind of doing monotonous daily art working tasks, which is which was good for the first six years. And I got like, not six years, six months. First year. Um, I got loads of experience just working in like a creative team, creative studio, and I learned so much like that, that's been so beneficial now just in using Illustrator. I know like I got to learn like every shortcut which speeds up the process by like hours, which is so much better. And then my friend in Belfast who runs a, a beer blog, this is my kind of first attempt at anything beer branded. He approached me towards the end of my time in Mary Mary to look for some website icons, comics, and some branding for his website. So that was kind of around the time, around the end of my time at Mary Mary. And then when I seen the kind of job post for Four Pure, and then just applied for that. And then that's how I got into there. So I've been a Four Pure now as an in-house illustrator for about, so ne next month I'll have been there a year. So I kind of, I'm the only illustrator in there. There's an illustrator and a graphic designer. So absolutely everything image based there comes from me. So it's the, so it'd be the beer labels, the font badges, merch, everything. So the, this was my, this was the first one that I created for them last year. Um, so the process will kind of be, I'll get a name and a place that it's inspired by. And that's kind of it. <laughs> and I'll kind of just go off there. And these are the kind of past couple iterations of things here. 
And because, like I said, I'd always wanted to be doing comic books, I kind of found it really beneficial for me to kind of pitch in things that when, I, when I'm finished here, I'll be able to be more confident in creating it. So I was able to pitch in creating comic books with each label to add more context to the label. So it'll be like, I always, so it's weird. So, so for these, I always, the main thing for me is storytelling. And then it's almost, it's functionality as a label is secondary. So the main focus to me will always be having something in the center. That'll be the main focal point. So for these, they all work as when you see them front on on a shelf, they're fine. But there's something for people who would want to pick the can up and look on either side of it. So I do put little kind of Easter eggs in there. And this one here was done in collaboration with a company called Brewgooder, who kind of their main focus is getting fresh water to like Malawi and these countries. So each pint you buy, they put into like a charity. So there's some little Easter eggs in there, like their their water tank was in the background that they, they built at one of the schools out in Malawi. And then the, the main character having the shovel, Brewgooder's Brewgooder's logo was like the shovel and stuff and then all kind of animals that are native to like Africa. And yeah, so like each one comes with a, so the, the, the comic book service, the label. So the label will always be one panel in the comic and then the surrounding will just be like a story that can be built around each label, which is fun. And then, so the, like I said, the process will start with, I'll get a name and a place where it's based. So I'll take it into Pinterest just create like a quick mood board to kind of get some ideas going. And then I'll get it into the sketchbook. So this was for Nightcap. And to me, like color palette is probably the most important piece of anything that I do. I think it just ties it all together really nicely, especially if you can get it down to, to around five colors. And even all throughout uni, I've always hated the sketchbook stage. So I spend most time, like it can be hours on end. Like a lot of the time I'll get a project and, and I'll sit like for an hour without even drawing anything because I, I visualize it in my head way more than I do. So I find by the time I get it into my sketchbook, I've kind of already got a strong and clear idea of how it's actually going to be. So for Nightcap, it was just these sketches and the one on the bottom, it kind of ended up just being this. And that was the final one. So it's not too far away. Usually my sketches are pretty clear on how they're actually going to look so yeah that was the whole run for that again this was in collaboration with jameson so there's little easter eggs throughout it like the billboard has the founding date and then this one was the kind of the focus of that was creating the mood like a rainy night and how inviting the bar in cork could look so that was kind of the idea behind that the comics in the corner and yeah that's the bump badges, everything will be created by me, which was a lot of pressure to begin with. <laughs> Especially when you're coming into a company that kind of already had a, like the main, the, the main struggle for me coming into this job was they already had an illustrator before. So you're kind of unaware when you start, it's like, do they want me to do my style or do they want me to imitate the previous person? So that was the kind of main learning curve for getting like this in-house job. They'd already established a style and a brand identity. And I had to adapt it a bit for the first couple of months. But as of now, it's kind of got to the point where I literally can just draw anything in my style. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. So over, over lockdown, it's kind of probably been the busiest I've ever been. Because like at the start, it was always just social media kind of support because everything was so reactionary. And we kind of just wanted to create stuff that was maybe a distraction from how grim the world is so at the start of it I kind of did like a bunch of stuff on Instagram stories which was fun so like it was a comic book that would have like branching path storyline so people could vote on where they wanted to go so that was what I spent the first couple of weeks doing and just recently we kind of just finished off this new project which was a, a box branded like with six new beers the whole box is illustrated it comes with postcards and I created six six labels in three weeks and that the whole idea was for people to kind of go on a go on an adventure with an adventure from your sofa, like with no passport required. That was the whole idea. So then 
these sex labels were just kind of like New Orleans, China, um, Fiskars in Norway or Sweden, I think that is. Yeah, don't quote me on that one. And I skipped. So yeah, Rio de Janeiro, this one was like Polynesia, the guy being ca a castaway, and then one space, which was the funnest one because most of them are usually based on like a kind of exact location. So I kind of just look at cultures there and things I can draw from, whereas space, I was kind of just allowed to go all out with it. And I was just kind of looking at some Jetsons vibe stuff. But like, yeah, post this, like the past couple of weeks, I've spent just pulling together my portfolio, updating my website, all those things. So I can kind of approach, approach new clients and then, yeah, because I've gotten so much more confident and proficient in actually being an illustrator that I can confidently like approach a company and ask for freelance work. Whereas before graduating, my main struggle was like, oh, I'll email this client, but I'll probably shit myself if they actually get back and say like, yeah, we want you to do some work. <laughs> I'll be like, oh shit, really? So now I can be like, oh yeah, I can do that. But yeah, I kind of that's kind of been my journey, and it's probably been a bit more sporadic. My notes were a bit all over the shop. But yeah, thanks. I think that's what I've got with it. Thank you. That was really, really good. Yeah. Um, a question actually cropped up, or a couple of cropping up. So yeah. if it's okay, we'll ask those, answer those now. Yeah, so perfect. the first one we got is, what's it like working in-house with no other creatives? To be honest, when I first started, it was that was kind of the most daunting thing about it. But... um. Because like I said, it's a lot of pressure to kind of, when I was in a job as a creative, a creative and like art worker, there's a lot of people there in the room. There's 12 different people. So when you go on holidays and stuff, someone can just pick up your work. Whereas when you're the only illustrator, there's kind of a pressure of like, oh, if you leave or you're off, then no one else can pick up the work. So you need to always be doing it. But once you kind of get past that, it's really fun and exciting to know that everything that's seen by consumers is your work and like if you just go on instagram or or see sprays or anything now and just seeing your work there it's, it's amazing and just knowing that yeah i guess having that creative control and just being recognized as that's your role is real fun i think but yeah it's weird it definitely took a while to kind of leave the pressure behind and it's definitely yeah. still something i struggle with. definitely still something i struggle with but yeah, it's good when you can get past it and then kind of just enjoy the process. And then when you finally see the work on shelf, like I'm so excited. I think this new box comes out tomorrow and it's going to be amazing because the whole box was illustrated by me, all the cans, the postcards that come with it, that comes with the map, all these things are going to be fun to see in person. So it all pays off yeah. once you can get past the, um, your, your, yourself, yourself doubt, <laughs> which is just like, a seems to be a problem with every single illustrator in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll save the other question until after, if that's okay. Um, yeah, that's absolutely fine. We'll get you both talking, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Through. Yeah, I just wanted to start just a little bit after uni um, and talk about uh, what it was like coming out of uni and having this like idea of wanting to be a designer but then going straight into working in a smoothie bar and creating uh, smoothies for people instead of drawings. Um, that's what I did. I went to a smoothie bar, but on my way to work, I'd always walk past this um, shop, a skate shop. And it was uh, this one. It was really cool. It's on the corner of the street. And a pretty unique little place. It really it reminded me of uh, the Nighthawks painting by David Hopper. Um, but anyway, they had paintings up or drawings up on in the window, and I went in one day and I said to the guy, I was like, um, I just started asking about the drawings, and he turned out to be the artist. And we, he actually said that I could um, have some work up in his, I could sell some of my work in his shop, um, and so he kind of gave me his like small brief, and uh, and that's what I did. And well, the next day or one of the next days, I created this illustration for, it's like almost like a gift to say like, thank you for like, listening to my story and um, and like allowing me to sell stuff. Um, and he liked it and he, he put it up on the website. I think that was like one of the first things 
which uh, I did that went like digital, like I think it was like flyers or something. But um, I remember seeing this go live on the website and I was like, well, it's really cool. Um, and there was like a massive motivational boost. Um, and, and then, yeah, so I went on to create a first poster. It was kind of like an idea of his. He never got around to doing it. So I went ahead and did it. Um, and it was just meant to be like all the fish that you're meant to find in the Thames. I don't know how, it's what Google said, but I don't know how truthful it is. Um, so a lot of these are quite exotic, but um, especially not now, I don't think you'd find them. But uh, having that up in the shop window, uh, walking past it every day when I was going to work in this little um, cafe, it was like a huge um, like boost to my motivation. Like I knew I was still like working towards what I wanted to do and I wasn't just going to be stuck working in like a smoothie bar for the rest of my life. Um, which was great because I got loads of free smoothies. But um, And yes, yeah, so then he asked me to do another illustration because the first one went well. Um, and um, uh, I did this one, another one, great one to see on the, in the window and and cool to see people in my hometown buying it. And, and my grandparents have one like in their centerpiece, which is pretty cool. Um, and and yeah, we kind of built a good relationship. Um, and he would give me these small projects like um, icons for the website. I did like illustration, uh, animation for the logo of the shop. Um, and he would give me free skate stuff for design designing stuff and sometimes i get paid sometimes i'd get like like new trucks or something which was a pretty cool little deal we had um but i wanted to talk about my process of designing um and and looking back now i've realized how much time was wasted um by creating like pointless sketches like i remember like this one for example i, I hand a hand sketch with leaves and then like then i color them in and then I live traced them on Illustrator and and had all these different leaves which just took so much time and then I compiled them into this when in reality I could have just done like a simple sketch and built them in Illustrator which is what I would do now um, and yeah a good example was when I did this Freakonomics cover I did this thumbnail which I look at now and I see like it's got so much potential um, and character but for some reason, I decided to turn it into this really crappy sketch where I, I got my ruler out and I drew everything perfectly and I, I measured stuff and, and I scanned it into my computer and, and live traced those lines and then turned them into shape. It was like this huge process, which was like totally not necessary. Um, and it's just what I assumed I had to do with the designer. I thought that's what you do. Like you, you have to have this process. Um, so that's like one of the main things that I've kind of learned since uni. It's just like really strip, like strip, strip, strip back your process of designing. Um, and so now, like I, I, I just use my laptop. Like I don't have a uh, tablet or a or a mouse kind of thing. I just use the laptop so I can go wherever and not have to worry about having to carry anything with me, um, which is pretty convenient. Um, so yeah, so uh, I quit the smoothie job and I got offered a job to uh, a graphic designer for a startup. And it was a really small startup. It was run by a friend of a friend and my friend was working for the company. Uh, he was the one that actually recommended me. Um, but the job was in Barcelona. And so I got relocated. Um, I think it was like... I had like a week or so to make up my mind and, and I jumped on the plane and went to Barcelona. Although I, I didn't because I, I missed my flight, um, even though the airport is like five minutes from my house. Um, so uh, I had to book another flight, but then I did make it the next day. Um, but it definitely wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Uh, it was a bit more cloudy. Um, but yes, yeah, so I started... Uh, we were living in a, like a, in a, an apartment. We were working from the apartment as well, so it was very like small company, and there were only like eight of us, I think. Um, and this was like one of the first illustrations I created. That was like the homepage for the website, um, and it was crazy. I mean, going from working in, in this cafe to like doing what I would do in my spare time, but but uh, getting paid for it, and it was it was like mind blowing, really. Um, I learned some like really important things, but like. I also made some really 
big errors, like uh, one of my stupidest moments where I misspelled Papaya Pods, which was the name of the company, and wrote Papa Pods as the main link uh, email address. Um, and we had thousands of cards printed, and I only realized in the train home to pick them up. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty terrible. But I had some really good moments too, uh, which was when they wanted to redesign the logo. And I remember everyone standing around and and kind of arguing and no one could really settle on an idea. And, and I remember the CEO was like, let's just leave this and change his hands. Like, if anyone's going to know, he knows. Um, that was quite a daunting um, moment, but I, I was kind of excited. So these were a few of the a few of the, the designs I did. I had hundreds of them, but like I kind of whittled them down to so an important step. And I wasn't really going anywhere with it. I remember going out for a cigarette and I saw this bus and it kind of something clicked in my head and I was like, that's the kind of direction I want to go in. And I went back and kind of found this new uh, this new where I wanted to go with the logo on it. And then, yeah, and I made this and I was, everyone was super happy with it. I was super happy with it. It was me looking super happy with it. Um, yeah, and it was cool seeing it on like business cards on the website, all this much shitty t-shirts and, and stuff. But but yeah, I got to work on all kinds of illustrations for the website. Like, the company went on for a few years and, and in that time we opened like uh, markets in all different countries and I got to do the illustrations for each one, which was, it was weird, like just getting paid to do something, which is just so fun. Um, and just I did all kinds of illustrations uh, and little mini postcards I did and, and that, they wanted this mascot, which looks more like an avocado and a papaya, but, but that was pretty fun. Like I did like an old school Mickey Mouse one, which, which was pretty cool. And it was just, just a lot of just fun, really. Like I had, there was a lot of boring stuff I had to do, like, um, like uh, letterheads and like PowerPoint presentations, but like most of it was just, creating I would come up with an idea and then I'd propose it and most of them that's so yeah like they were quite a um, design oriented company what they wanted to be at least and um, they let me do pretty much whatever I whatever I suggested um, and yes yeah, so after a couple of years I think the company grew from like being like seven or eight people to like around 25 we moved off we moved into an office three times each one getting better and my salary like doubled and it was I really can I thought it was like too good to be true. And then uh, and then it shut down. Like most startups, everything kind of crumbled at the last minute and we ran out of money and a lot of people had to get let let go and and then I think I took this photo um, when I think we got the call finding that it was all over. It was pretty sad. But. And then there were a lot of moments after that where I didn't really feel like doing anything and so I don't really do much. I was playing Fortnite and um, that's my mate who got the job. Um, and I was actively looking to work, but wasn't really having any luck. And then kind of showed my portfolio and CV to people and uh, my friends found me and they said it was pretty crap. Um, and it was, it was really bad. Uh, so I spent a good time like up there on my website, making it look fresh, getting like a new CV with like all the like, new knowledge on it. But, and, and as soon as I did that, I started getting loads of responses to the jobs that I was putting out. And anyway, I got this job working at Hostmaker, which is a company uh, from the UK. Um, but they had offices in Barcelona. Um, and that was one of my designs, uh, which I really hate. Uh, and I don't really like talking about this time, because it was a really crappy time. Um, my manager, who hired me, she was really nice at the start, but she just wouldn't let me share any of the ideas uh, that I had my own. So like everything that we did was kind of something that she would come up with it and then be like, okay, you've got to do this. So I didn't feel like I was progressing as a designer. Um, and this went on for quite a while. We used to have all these arguments and started clashing loads. And we used to get into really heated arguments in the office. And um, to the point where I reached, I couldn't take it. And like out of a movie, I just, I quit on the spot and I packed my stuff and I was left. Um, and then the CEO called me and he was like, if you wouldn't mind staying, would you do it remotely? And I didn't have much money, so I said, yeah. But then like a month later, she fired me. So uh, 
that was a really crappy experience. Um, so I don't really have much work other than that. Because I happened so quickly, like I had my laptop back and, and I created quite a lot of assets. Um, something I'm not really that proud of because it was kind of her ideas, but um, I didn't get to save anything. Um, so that pigeon you saw and, and this was the only thing I can like, dig up. Um, and that pigeon was, was everywhere, like on the underground and, and in Barcelona and, and all these cities and it really frustrated me. But uh, I found out some good news that they they went under as well. So that's good. Um, and they got done. They were on Panorama for uh, breaking the law. So that, that was good. So I started freelancing. I think it was like straight after that, really. Um, picked up some new skills um, from from my housemates. I was living with uh, two developers. Um, they taught me how to uh, like build websites and, and work in uh, HTML and CSS programming languages. And so I started looking at screens that looked a lot more like this and a lot less like Illustrator uh, for a while, which was actually really fun. Um, and I started building websites for people instead of uh, doing just like illustrations. And um, but then the more I learned with code, I realized I could animate my illustrations with the code and you could interact with them. Um, so I started making these icons. Um, and, and landing pages, which normally would be static, but now they were moving. Um, so for example, all these different elements down the side, like they, you hovered over them and they, all, they would all move. Um, and I felt like I could take control of the whole project. Like now, before I could just offer uh, uh, icons or illustrations, but now I could give the whole package. And um, before you had to someone to implement the website, but now I could do it myself. And instead of them screwing up, uh, I could screw it up myself. Um, and that was obviously more money because you're doing more things. But um, once it becomes your process, it's, it's easy. Like um, now everything that I've learned is, is something that I, I implement every day. Um, and so yes, I still made loads of icons. Uh, this is something like a snapshot. I mean, some of them are from the Pod days, but a lot of them are stuff projects that I'm doing now. And just, yeah, you kind of icons are really fun because you kind of have to represent something, which could be like really like complex, but just like a small image. Um, it's pretty difficult, but if you get it, it's it's pretty fun. Some logos, I do a lot of logos now. Um, some that um, are a lot better than others. Um, the up to one um, was pretty cool because I got uh, it was paid paid the most, and also. I got to see like it put on cars and everything and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and the process behind the logo, it's just like, it's crazy. Like I do a lot more uh, work uh, preparing for a logo than I would for uh, an illustration um, when it's just such a simple object. But still doing loads of illustration, a lot of, it, a lot of it's very digital. Um, I tr I've tried to bring more of like a, a sketchy style back into my work recently. Um, and but yeah, I do prefer I do prefer these illustration jobs over over everything else. Um, and I try and keep a very style. Like I don't, I, I don't. A lot of my parents always say to me like, "Oh, well, I can tell when it's your work," but I think they're just being kind. I really don't think I have a specific style. Um, and so yeah, now I live in Mallorca and I freelance from here. So uh, I don't. I, I make a I make enough to pay rent and, and feed myself and. The stuff that I love doing is, is free, and uh, just hanging out with fish. Um, and that's where I'm going to end my presentation with my big old foot. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, so next we kind of have um, the question kind of section. So obviously, anybody listening, if you have any questions, start flooding the chat with that. Um, We've actually got some questions that have been answered kind of before time, which I'll start us off with. And then we're going to kind of dip into the questions that are coming up in the chat. Um, so the first question we have is, how do you find illustration work, i.e. have you approached industry or has industry approached you? And what has been your favourite commission to work on and why? So maybe Warren, do you want to kick off with that? Yeah, sure. Um, am I on yet? Yeah. Um, yeah, like like I said, I was lucky enough to have my first two 
big client jobs approach me, which I know is pretty rare in the illustration world. It can be quite a grind, I think. I think the hardest part is always just being emailing everyone and hearing so little back. The exact same thing happens when you're kind of applying for jobs. It's really tough because it's, I don't know, it's kind of character building, I think, to get rejections and stuff, especially because when I started out, I was like so specific. I was like, I'm only, I only want to work for these people and I only want to work in this but you find out it just doesn't work that way <laughs> and for the first while post-graduation you kind of just take what you can until you build up the portfolio and everything to go out and do it better but um like I kind of went over whatever commissions and stuff that I had in my presentation freelance like I've not done an incredible amount of it because I've been lucky enough to both like my I literally left Mary Mary to go straight into Fort Pure. I had no time in between. Yeah. So, so I only did like freelance work while balancing part time for like six months after graduating, which I did have enough work to build a nice portfolio. Like, and even, even having people like Harrods or Culture Trip on your client list was pretty good. It helped. And yeah, like my, my favorite. My favorite kind of project so far has been that most recent one. The, the no passport required box, I think, just because it was such a such a massive, it was the most work that I've done in such a short space of time. Like the the, the six labels in that that small space of time, three weeks, along with everything. So like the concept, the name, the box was pretty much all me. So I don't know. I think just having the freedom to do that in your job really helps. It can be both really tough and both rewarding because you know it's all yours. I get such a like I said my briefs that I get are so paper thin they're almost non-existent which when you first get it it's a pain in the arse because you're like what do you want it to look like yeah. but then <laughs> after a while it's kind of good that I mean it's just your own head you get to create exactly what you want it. and that's kind of one of the main benefits of it but again it's tough to because I think at the start of every single project that I get I'll have like a meltdown about it and be like, what the fuck am I going to do for this? I literally draw the same thing every time. I can't illustrate on the worst. <laughs> but then like a day later, you're like, oh, no, actually, this sketch works. There we go. That's fine. Why am I completely deranged? <laughs> but yeah, that's a tangent. Um, commission work. Yeah, I haven't done a whole lot. That's kind of what I've been doing the past couple of weeks. I've kind of been, because when I look back over my last, I haven't updated my website since the, like the past couple of weeks is when I revisited my website for the first time after after because i think i created my website in third year because there was a project i yeah. think yeah so yeah. that was the last time my website was made and i'm going back to it it's an absolute mess same in my portfolio it was like all these images different sizes so inconsistent and i find if you don't like the work in your portfolio anymore take it out and if you don't want to work in that way anymore take it out because a lot of people really like that that hand-drawn London image I did but I didn't like I didn't want that to be my portfolio anymore because I didn't want anyone to be like oh I really like that and then have to draw that way again because I don't like it so that's I think that's beneficial to do even if it's something you think everyone else likes if you don't want to do it then don't put it in there like it's not really benefit because it's not something I would be like proud to show off anymore I want to create work that I want to always like when it's done I can put it on display for me so it's not just like, okay, I'll just do this to kind of, I don't know, say that I like, did it, but not be proud of it. I don't know if that makes any sense. But yeah, no, yeah. No, I totally understand that. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't agree more. It's like just take stripping your website down and getting rid of stuff, which you don't want to do anymore. Like I have, you, you get these people that want, like you said, like this kind of different style that you just don't want to associate yourself with. But yeah. Um, yeah, it definitely helps uh, helps um, stop getting those requests. Yeah, those yeah, but yeah. that's that's a very recent thing. Like, I wouldn't. It's not something that I would confidently done graduating. Like, I was. It was something I was more when I graduated. I was proud of the versatility of my portfolio. It's like, oh look, I've got collage. Look, I've got hand drawn. Look, I've got digital. So I can do all these things. But now yeah, I'm kind of more focused on everything looking like it belongs to the same illustrator. It's all consistent. 
like so the port like the portfolio will match the CV and the CV will match the invoice. Like all that, I think, is more beneficial to me now than being like, look, I can do all these things. So commission me for anything. Definitely worked at the start for that, but now when I kind of my main focus is a style and just being like, oh, that looks like Warren's work, and not being like. Here's a random collage I just decided to do for no yeah. reason. A lot of us in the third year have had to be thinking about that recently, I think. And we've, we've done some portfolio um, mm. surgeries and stuff like that. Yeah. And we've been kind of curating our work um, on our websites and on our portfolios. And I know, like, I for one, I, like, I kind of almost forgot all my, what all my first year work looked like because I just, <laughs> it's not relevant at all anymore. It's not anything that I'm bringing mm. to if that makes sense so yeah as we as we kind of move beyond graduation I know that um mm. yeah we'll kind of become more like a package and we'll know exactly the work yeah. we're wanting to make and we'll be kind of rejecting the mm. pieces of work that we don't like so much anymore um because it is a personal thing isn't it it's yeah you yourself want to see in your own work and mm -hmm. um there will always be companies and stuff and employers who are going to want that thing that you want in your own work as well so that's obviously something to yeah consider yeah there. i don't but as well if there is people that just haven't found that yet it's no rush like i like i said i didn't start doing digital illustration until like the last four or five months of my third year everything before that was just everything and uni is absolutely the time to just do that just figure it out. It's yeah. no, there's no, there's no major rush. Like that's that's kind of what I find. Like it was until so late in, in my degree that I kind of find the style that works for me. Just threw myself in it because I find that's kind of the easiest way for me to work. If I kind of force myself to be in a situation where, I have to do it now or, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is which is why I kind of in, inject like things I want to do post after four pure like comic books and stuff. If I can inject. If I can force myself, if I can force that work into this in-house work, then I have so much time to learn and fix it rather than doing it out on my own. Because I, 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 I struggle a lot with self-initiated work because I'm always like, who's it for? Is it for me? Am I doing it for Instagram? So if I kind of put myself in a situation where I'm forced to be doing it for my full-time job, then it's better for me. Yeah. To learn yeah. as a graduate, just to build myself as an all-rounder for when. I do finally become just a full-time freelance illustrator. Yeah, no, I think that's really good kind of advice. Um, do you have anything to add on to that, James? To answer that no, I just, I totally, I totally agree with everything Warren yeah. said. Like, I, I still don't really feel like I found my style. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I was going to say this, this question, it was something that I was going to focus my presentation around, um, that uh, how do you find work and it's this daunting thing of like um if reaching out to people or uh, people are going to find me on instagram or whatever but the thing that's worked to me is is, is who you know and it's it sounds uh really like annoying like oh i don't know anyone but it's it's like for me if i when i went started doing this presentation and looking back at all my work i started to notice like a red thread that was connecting everything and without being too philosophical everything kind of came back to plymouth um, and I shared my house, well, I had like 12 housemates, huge house. Um, and one of them was the guy I ended up working with. Um, little did I know then that like we would be working together in the future. But, uh, at uni, I used to, he, he was a, a, a developer and he used to create these little games that he needed graphics for them. And he would ask me about, oh, can you do like a little character design or something? And, and I would do it just like a little fade, you know, and it's, it's also like helping me, like I'm just practicing on Illustrator or whatever. And I also draw, used to draw like birthday cards for my housemates, like really lame little cartoons, but um, all these little things I didn't realize they were like, like I was like in his head affirming that I was a good designer and without knowing, like for me, I was just doing little fun little things. But for him, when he left uni, he realized like, oh, I know the guy who, I want to work. I want to work for the company. Um, and so I think like one of the main thing is trying to become the guy or the girl for, for the person, you know, like just, uh, 
yeah, so with Empire Pods, once I left, I started getting all these freelance jobs. And it's because I had become the guy for all these people I was working with. Like, they all uh, recommended me now because I was the designer that they knew. Um, and 90% of the work that I've, I've got, I wouldn't have got if I hadn't have started that job. Um, I, I, I do reach out to people and ask for work. And sometimes I get it. And a lot of the times, like, I don't hear anything. But a lot of, a lot of it is just word of mouth and... I know someone who can who can do that. Um, so that's been that's been like something which I've realised more and more. Um, I yeah, I still do try to look for work, but um, I just I just keep my fingers crossed that someone's going to say my name to someone and and uh, I'll get a little project coming. Cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, obviously, like again, a lot of us are in a position where we're trying to like make those initial contacts with people and like make those connections um and obviously we're all quite aware that that's something that will just continue with time we can't expect like that now and stuff like that necessarily um but equally a lot i know a lot of um third years and probably second and first years have been getting commissioned by people and stuff so um yeah it's it's nice to hear how that continues i guess yeah i guess my my advice would be just try to prove to everyone that you're the best designer, you know? Um, don't hold back from doing little favors for someone because, uh, I mean, yeah, like you don't want to head down a route where you end up doing work that you want to, you don't want to do, but doing little design favors, like it goes a long way. Like you never really know who you're going to impress and, and who's going to recommend you further down the line. Um, so yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. So we'll move on to the next question. So, was your work always kind of editorial or design driven or did it kind of actively change to better fit in with the kind of editorial or design landscape and maybe how did that happen? And also what advice would you give someone wanting to kind of make design or editorial work as their main focus? Do you want me to start? Yeah, yeah we'll go ahead. Man. <laughs> um, well, uh, funny start. when I started university, uh, I was I, can, I, can, I got massive reverb. Yeah, I, I can hear that. I keep talking, maybe it's up. Well, anyway, I don't know. Um, when I started university, I was doing fine art, uh, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make art, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I liked drawing, and I, uh, assumed that I should just study art um, and so when I was, I remember it was like a week into university and they were getting us to paint these boxes and destroy them from really weird stuff um, and I was I knew that I wasn't in the right place but, um, and I was before heading into college one day I was watching Vimeo and there was this uh, like video about this illustrator John Contino um, and it was kind of like a a snapshot into his life and like his process and his like workshop in his house and and like his kind of lifestyle and I was like well that is li literally exactly the life I want um and I could see loads of similarities in my work um and that was the day that I walked into college and I changed the illustration I had like a meeting with Mel um I really I showed like some really crappy little sketches and um postcards something I made and and she accepted me onto the course, which thank God, because I don't know what I'd be doing now. Um, and yeah, I got kind of off topic, but uh, that was before that moment. I didn't really like, it's kind of naive. I didn't really know people worked as illustrators. And I didn't really know, understand that it. it was just a huge subcategory to art. I just assumed people were artists and that was it. Um, and like, once I understood, like, I was like, well, I know, I kind of know who I am now. I know what I like doing and I know what I want to do. Um, now I can define it. Um, and so uh, I guess my advice would be uh, that understand what excites you, like if that is um, uh, editorial work, and like just completely surround yourself with it. Um, uh, do whatever it takes. I've got this written down if it looks like I'm reading. Um, um, and but yeah, also don't categorize yourself too much. So I feel like if you put yourself in a label yourself as a this type of design or this type of design, it's like, uh, especially at the start, um, 
you're, you're going to be turning down loads of work, but like loads of these jobs that I, I would have turned down. So I didn't think that I was that kind of designer ended up getting me work, which was the type of work that I wanted. Um, I mean, now I, I probably wouldn't take on a job, which was, uh, on a crochet illustration or something, but you, at the beginning, I think it's important to kind of explore your options and, um, and then the editorial work will come, like if, if that's what you want, like, uh, it's just don't put up barriers at the start, I think. I don't know if that's good advice or terrible advice. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. Like the, one, of the, one of the biggest learning curves for me as a graduate was leaving uni and then thinking, not to make it sound negative, thinking you could be picky about your work, yeah. really. And then you kind of slowly realize that the work doesn't just come to you. Like you kind of just take it and get, I think. Because I did leave it being like, no, I only want to do this type of work. I only work for this type of person. But then like four or five months in, I was like, please give me anything. Yeah, I'll take anything. <laughs> yeah, I'll do anything. <laughs> but um, I think like a lot of my work at the beginning was kind of just, it serves kind of one purpose. It was just kind of like pattern design. It would be something that could be printed onto like a card, a notebook or prints. It was kind of just like work that can just be a print that you can sell but then it started because it kind of started being an illustrator just because i love comics so much that's i always knew that that's the route that i want to go to so now that's why i kind of try and do things that serve multiple purposes in the work so something like the beer labels that serve as a beer label and a piece of narrative imagery so i think and and just having and i'm working on narrative and single imagery is definitely important if you want to get into editorial work because you have to have the ability to be able to draw one picture and capture an article that could be a thousand words long so you need to be good at that and i think it's a good idea to probably especially in third year like as a project it's probably good to find articles by publishers that you would want to work for and then just mock up your own iteration of that already published article and then maybe just shortlist people you want to work work for, do it, do that for them, and then just kind of email them out. It's pretty handy for finding email addresses and contact info in actual magazines still on the front page. Like if you ever get a flight and it has like the easier in flight magazines, it usually has a lot of contact info on that like first page for the proper people you like to email. So my, magazines are helpful for that, whereas websites will just be a crappy form. That's the worst thing on any website ever. Or just like hello at blah, blah, blah dot com. So I think, yeah, finding the right person to email, shortlisting people you want to work for, creating your own versions of those articles is like a really good experience for that, especially starting out. Because then, like with mine, I didn't do that in third year which is why I look back on these editorial articles and be like, they're the pure shit, apart from like one image. So yeah, <laughs> now, now I'd be a, little, a bit more confident because I kind of, like I said, I try and I don't create something just to serve one purpose. I kind of be like, okay, if I do this, it'll ben benefit me in this way, that way, and that way. So I kind of try and have it multiple each time, which does do my own head in because I put, again, ever I put so much pressure with each new piece for this needs to be, it needs to build on the last one or I'm not moving forward. Amazing. Um, do either of you have experience of being rejected or maybe not hearing back from somebody? Do you tend to follow that up and try again with the same company or would you just kind of move on from them? Hmm. It's a, it depends, I think. Like if it's someone you really want to work for, you kind of push a few times. Um, but, I mean, if you're just looking for a job to uh, do some illustration work, I mean, I, I don't, you, I, I maybe I send a follow-up email if I haven't heard anything, but um, very rarely do I really, really push. Um, I mean, if they want you, they want you, you know, and uh, unless they're not looking at their emails. Um, mm. But uh, I guess it's good not to annoy people too much as well. Um, yeah, that's maybe, they, maybe they, they do want you, and they're just they're busy, <laughs> um, and they're like you're filling out my inbox. Um, yeah, but um, oh yeah, I've definitely had loads of rejections, loads, not just yeah. at work. Uh, um, yeah. and it's 
yeah, you kind of get used to it, really. Um, it's kind of, I mean, I've, I've been applying to some full-time jobs now as well, or for remote jobs, but just every day you forget you forget about these people you've applied to, and then a couple months down the line you'll get a rejection email, and you're like, who was that? Like, yeah. And you kind of forget, and then you get like reminded that you're shit. Right? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's it, it is character building because sometimes when I when I did get to the point where I was just looking for anything, I was applying for stuff. It's like, oh, I could definitely do this, or in a way, you kind of there's like an ego thing to it where you're like, oh, I feel probably better than this, and then you start yeah, rejecting yeah. from that, and you're like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> maybe I do need to look at myself now and be like, <laughs> but I th- I also think it's worth not just focusing on rejection, like. I get caught up and if I get a job like this job now in house yeah I like I really struggled with imposter syndrome for like the first half year of that and it's worth always if someone picks you they picked you because they thought you were the best and you're right for the job not and then don't spend too much time being like how did I get this can I do it just kind of I think just um say yes and then just figure it out later yeah, there's a point you brought up earlier, which I thought was really, I connected with completely, which was when you said, before you start a project, and you don't have any ideas, everything's still like a blank slate. Yeah. And you think, like, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like, I have literally no ideas. Um, yeah. And that feeling of dread of, like, oh, my God, like, I'm going to yeah. completely let this plant down. Yeah. But as soon as you start again, like, doing some of sketches or something, and then you get that moment of, like, Oh god! Like, I know the track I'm on now. Yeah, um, there it is. It's always like that every time. Every, every time. single time, without fail. It like I don't want to sound super negative, but every yeah. time without fail, it'll be a fucking nightmare when I start a new yeah. one. To be honest, I'd be like, "How the hell am I an illustrator? Why am I an illustrator? Why am I doing this to myself?" And then I'd be like, "Oh, okay, there it is." And then sometimes yeah. that can be a full day of just pure like yeah. dread, dread. existential dread. <laughs> But yeah. it does come. That's the thing. Even worth reminding yourself, it always does come back. And when that but, moment does come, it's like it's super it's, gratifying. Yeah, like. yeah, it's worth it. And it's the same even when I'd be like, oh, the sketch works. And then I'll kind of take ages just trying to figure out the palette. And then like, that's not working. That's not working. And then it won't start to kind of look like something that I'm happy with until like three quarters of the way through it. Yeah. So I kind of do a lot of the times just push on through rather than see it not working at the start and then just scrap it and back to the drawing board. I usually do just kind of make sure that it's gone as far as it can, which is why it's helpful as well as an in-house person, because I do have people I can show ideas to and then maybe get some guidance. But a lot of the time I do just do it and then I don't get very much amends, which is a good thing. I guess. Yeah, I, I'm really bad with uh, sharing early work for my uh, uh, early stages of my work. Like if I get a job, I usually try and see how far I can get without having to share any of it. With yeah, that, yeah. That feeling of uh, uh, rejection or like we, we don't like it. It's just so strong. Yeah, um, yeah. And I try to like minimize their input as much as possible. I don't know mm. if that's the best practice. It, but it's because it's completely it personal. Strong. Yeah, it is really personal. Yeah, yeah. So, and then sometimes you show us, and a lot of people don't understand the concept of. Yeah. concept sketch like I, there's been stuff I'm working on I'm like okay this is where I'm at with this can now what do you think of it and it was that carnival one that's like the Rio de Janeiro and everything was drawn and the character in the middle was just a, like a like a torso I hadn't drawn her legs yet and he was like oh yeah I kind of like it but I'm not really 100% sure on the, on the on the floating torso at the front and I'm like it's not fucking done yet yeah <laughs> So yeah, people yeah, you that, get well. a lot of stupid people as well. Yeah, so you kind of just have to, I don't know, like I do, I agree. Like you don't want to, I always have to find the middle grounds where I'm kind of comfortable to show it that they'll get it because I don't want to kind of show a sketch and then show a finished product because then sometimes it can go too far your way. You need to have some, yeah. of a, a mid, like a mid ground, I think. Yeah, I agree. Mm. That was really reassuring and really funny. <laughs> um, this is a question for you both. Um, how important is developing your own visual, um, unique visual language starting out, and how does it impact your enjoyment and longevity and evolution of your work? 
Hmm. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, it's really important to, uh, to have both intertwined completely. Um, hmm. um, a lot of the professional work that I get, later down the line, I'll learn things doing that which will influence uh, future work. Um, uh, example is when I, I'm working on a moment, a, a label for this health food brand, and uh, the, they wanted this like, really rustic style. And uh, at the time, I've been working with like clean lines, metric lines, stuff, and it really didn't fit with what they wanted. So I had to find this new process of working, and I didn't want to use brushes or anything. I wanted to carry on using like lines on Illustrator. And um, I found this technique of building everything how I normally would, like very vectory, like straight lines and everything. But then adding this real slight inconsistency to the line by using a roughen effect, really subtle, so like it wobbles it a little bit. And then on top of that, you add another effect, which is like really minuscule, where you whack everything up to 100, uh, and then like a little bit down to like 0.1. So it makes all these little inconsistencies really small. But uh, it was really effective and it made my lines like look textured and it kind of gave the effect that they wanted and what I was after. But I loved it so much that now I've gone back in my old work. I'm like, this looks really cool. I'm going to change everything I've done that I haven't published yet and put this effect on it. Um, but it's something that I wouldn't have found probably just by, if I would carry on like just doing my own thing. Sometimes these jobs, they kind of push you out of your comfort zone a bit like a weird color palette or or just a really strange like obscure brief that forces you to explore design a little bit and um yeah like that that the thing that little wiggly uh texture line thing is just like a, like a good example of like how uh I mean, I always think of like Illustrator or Photoshop as like this kind of like science lab where you can go around, you can mix stuff up and you can just like experiment and experimenting with Illustrator or whatever program you use is like super key, like the key to like just progressing as an Illustrator, like finding all the shortcuts and everything like that. Um, and I think I've really gone off topic, but I think. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely helpful. Like in an art worker role, I mean, I was doing no illustration there, but I learned the most about Illustrator in that job like it's i can't actually stress enough how much quicker you can do your work when you learn the shortcuts to illustrate yeah. photoshop it makes such a crazy difference like yeah. i remember spending like easily hours doing stuff that i could do in five minutes with shortcuts <laughs> and different functions that are available on illustrator well um like as far in terms of like a consistent style for like longevity, that's something that I've only kind of noticed again the past month or so. Once I've kind of been re redoing my website and putting portfolio together, I kind of looked at it and could see like, oh, actually, this does look like it belongs to the one portfolio, whereas my last portfolio looked like it could have been four different illustrators' work. It looked like it could have just been a graduate show with portfolio. <laughs> But no, yeah, it's kind of, I do think that's important and that's kind of one of my, it's just my focus so that people can see work or see a, see a beer label in the shop and be like, oh, that's that person. The same way people would look at different breweries like Beaver Town or, or anything like that, you know, and just find strong style. But that took a long time. I wouldn't stress on it being like, you have to do it. It just kind of comes with time and learning. Yeah, we'll get um, more consistent and stuff. Like the more we make and the more we understand yeah. what it is we're making and maybe why, I think that will just kind of come very naturally. And at some point mm. down the line, it will be yeah very clear that we all have a kind of consistent thing going on that we can obviously show as our output and stuff like that. So, yeah. 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 Thank you. I also think like when I... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. Uh, uh, I remember at uni, like when I, I, I discovered like these things for Illustrator, or I discovered like a certain way of working, and I was like, well, this is it. This is how I'm going to work for the rest of my life. Like, this is like the perfect way of working. Yeah. And then you learn something else, and you're like, oh, no, no, now this is the perfect way of working. Yeah. And it's constantly evolving. Like, you're always going to yeah. reach a stage where you're like, okay, now, 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 this is it. Like, I found yeah. my. Thing. So, 
Yeah. I just I love it when I find a new shortcut or a new technique on Illustrator. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I trial through YouTube, looking for tutorials and how to cool, make cool little patterns and stuff. Um, I think that's really important just to really understand the tool that you're using. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Vision tool. Yeah, um, I guess, uh, yeah, I didn't even think of that because I'm so caught yeah. up in my own thing. They just like cannot, can possibly think of Illustrator and instead of Illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's just worth reminding yourself, you are getting, like with each thing, you are just getting better. Like there's stuff I look at from two months ago and be like, okay, I can do that far better now than, than then. And it's not even something, it's not like an obvious thing. It's just little things that just kind of start to, yeah. you get more confident and clearer. At. Like it kind of, like I said, like being in-house, it forces me to do stuff that I probably wouldn't do on my own. Like I was never confident in drawing characters or I was never confident in drawing animals. But because a beer was going to be called Bear Tooth, I had to draw a bear and figure yeah. it out. And then you do just get gradually more confident. So it's kind of, I think it's important to kind of, I want to get to the point where if I get a commission or a job, I won't have to worry about turning it down because I'm not confident in drawing a person. Mm. Just being able to do all of it confidently. Yeah. So, I thought it was good to naturally like follow these tangents that like like you said like you've been told to draw a bear like you might learn something interesting about like animal anatomy and then you might want to follow that and just like I always find myself in like this kind of I have this project to do and then I'll figure out something interesting that I can do mm. on Illustrator and I start playing around with that and I'm not actually doing the work that I'm going to be doing yeah, I'm just passing a bite string but. <laughs> Yeah, um, I feel like every project I do, it feels like a departure from the kind of previous one that I had. But I always feel like each right. piece is like informed from the previous one. Yeah. And I'm always, I always feel like I'm improving. So I hope I am. But um, <laughs> yeah, like I think um, it, you know, we don't have to focus on the clarity of it at the moment, like how like coherent it all is, like exactly as long as we're making the work we want to that will just all kind of come, won't it? So, Yeah. Even if we're making crap work, like everything you do, like it, it's progressing. Like I, there was a time after uni when I was working at a cafe where I wasn't really doing anything, but I, I was sketching a lot with my stepbrother and we were just making really crappy little comics. But a lot of those things have influenced stuff now. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that. Um, and so like, even if you don't feel like you're doing the work that you you want to be doing like if you're doing something design related it's always kind of pushing pushing forward a little bit yeah yeah absolutely um so we're kind of down to our final three questions and one is actually aimed at you as individuals so like one is at james and one is at warren and then we have one of you for you both so i'll just get in with that so james what's the most useful tip learned in simplifying your own personal process and obviously warren if you've got something to add feel free to well, um, okay, I didn't prepare for this question, so I haven't got any notes to, to <laughs> stick them off. Um, I don't know, really. It just comes with time. Like like before I said, like I had all this junk with me. I had a scanner and I had I had this, the, the, the Wacom tablet, or whatever it's called. And, and at the time that worked for me, but like I remember like moving between my mum and my dad's and I had to take all this shit with me. And every time I wanted to, to work, um, and I think it was just wanting to be more efficient with like travel and um, I think I sold my tablet as well I think maybe that's why I, I didn't I stopped using it but um, uh, it's just finding what works best for you really like if if you, if you feel like a scanner is important in your work then, then use a scanner but for me I kind of took a look at my work and I thought, do I really need to be doing like a more refined sketch after a thumbnail? Um, even though I think like that's what a designer should do. And I realized I didn't. And I started just experimenting with just using a thumbnail and then putting that straight in Illustrator and trying to work off that. And it was better. Like I was, the, the kind of random marks you make in a thumbnail, sometimes they have meaning, like you don't realize it, but you did that with scribble for a reason and you wouldn't get that when you did a more refined sketch sometimes you kind of play with that a bit more on illustrator or I keep using illustrator but like whatever program you use um and yeah i think it's just just experiment and, and just 
to see what works best for you. I mean, that's probably the worst response. Um, uh, yeah. No, that's great. Thank you. Cool. So this one is aimed at you, Warren. So apart from comics, what's a project or brand you would love to work on or for um, that you haven't had the opportunity to be a part of yet? Hmm. I think I want to do more branding and packaging products just to kind of create something again completely different something cleaner and just I think that's kind of what would be really fun to me because that's kind of what I've been doing I've been emailing like coffee companies and different like like pre-mixed cocktail companies to do brand and work for them that would be just completely different from 4Pure just because I've, I I know exactly how 4Pure works and I know exactly how the label should look now which I kind of think, so it's a little bit less, like the work's still really hard, but it's less of a challenge knowing how you, like I know what it works, how it looks and it's going to work. So I kind of want to go back to square one with someone different again and just create something completely new. I think that's kind of one of my my goals next. But um, yeah, it, it, it's hard to know when you're, when, you, when you're in house because you're so caught up and you're, and you're and your thoughts and your time are also dedicated to creating work for one person and one company. So like you always think you're using like the best of your ideas a lot of the time there. So when that's, when you're, when you're finished with that, you're kind of, you're worn out, your best ideas are used. So it's kind of hard. I find that this is especially um, relevant to like me doing self-initiated work outside of, that because I always think oh I use my best ideas for that and if I'm not doing that then I'm not going to be happy with the work so it's a weird vicious circle that's kind of the one downfall of in-house work is you'll dedicate so much time and energy to that one thing that it might take away from you doing your own personal development product project I think but yeah I think now again like because I've got more confident and comfortable in creating work for them that way that now is the time that I can be like, okay, I want to work for other people and other projects just to try something new again and figure out another challenge. Not that it's not hard, but yeah. Don't know if that answers it. Amazing. Yeah, no, it does. Um, That actually leads into the next question really well as well. And I know we actually spoke about this ahead of time, but so do you guys maintain a personal practice outside of your day job? Mm. Mm, yeah um definitely like i said before like i'm always trying to experiment um illustrator um and so i, I sometimes i just open illustrator with no project and i just kind of just look at it and have a little play around and try and find like new techniques um but um but yeah no I'm, I'm the moment i'm working on creating a personal project work, creating a book of all the uh not all of like a lot of the marine species in the Mediterranean something I'm really passionate about is just like marine life and I love these old kind of old school kind of like this like these old school like illustration books and illustrated books and and I have like loads of books of fish and stuff like that and I thought oh it'd be cool if I could just make my own book and just illustrate all the fish and, and write little descriptions and stuff that I've found out and so that's what I'm working on at the moment it's a way bigger project than I thought it was going to be um and that's usually the case. Like I usually set deadlines for myself when I have a personal project and it usually end, ends up being like months off um, what I originally thought it would be. But, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely something that I'm kind of make my next focus is going to be more like looking for work myself and more self self initiated stuff, but as of as of, as of the past year, it has been it has been rare for me to kind of finish work and come home and want to do more. I kind of appreciate my own time a, a lot. To be like, I, it's it's hard for me. once you're especially now working from home, it's hard to separate the two because I literally work and like like I leave the bed and come here. So you get, like when 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 it's five, I'm kind of like done. And because mm. I'm putting so much time and energy and thoughts 
and everything I do here, it does kind of leave you to, afterwards being like, oh, I haven't got a, a whole lot of the time to do my own stuff, <laughs> especially when I've got The Last of Us 2 to play or um, <laughs> Terrace House to watch. No, a lot of us have been playing Animal Crossing on the Switch. Uh, yeah, I got, I got it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, definitely like with working remotely or freelance, like I found myself finding new spots in my my house where I can just move to. Like I think I must have worked on every different seat in the, <laughs> in the house. Yeah. And I'd love to see like a little montage from me just moving around the Yeah. Um, I worked in the living room last last Friday to change it up a bit. But I think here's a nicer backdrop, so I moved it back in. <laughs> That's always a thought. Um and Caroline's dropped into the chat um one last piece of advice from you both. For those graduating this year because obviously I've already explained to you we're still doing our final major projects at the moment um our deadline yeah. is back to August 20th um I think it was meant to be May 20th so I think that's like two or three months <laughs> so yeah do you have any advice for us lot um don't panic yeah um, don't put too yeah. much pressure on yourself I think like, that's it and, and yeah it just it, it is it is like a bit slow. Not for everyone. A lot of people do just kind of come out of, mm. out of kind of come out of uni and then just get all the work straight away. And then it's better not to ever compare yourself to that as well because it can take a lot of time. And I think if you do, for me it was different because I knew I wanted to leave uni and, and go into in house work because I like the stability of it. But if you wanted to do freelance, like what puts me off freelance now? is I know so little about taxes and invoices and all this here. So if you, if you kind of know that freelance is what you want to do, I would definitely concentrate some time on that side of it. The business aspect of actually being self-employed because I have not got the slightest clue of where to start with that. So that's kind of one of my excuses to be like, oh yeah, I can't be a freelance because I have no idea what taxes are. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I left that until the very last minute as Sam yeah. vouched for. I like pestered him for like a month, like, let's learn about tax. And then I like, it was time to fill it in. And I just didn't do it until like the day yeah. before. So, yeah. <laughs> Definitely worth paying attention to that. Whatever whatever lectures are available or anything in that freelance focused. Definitely. Especially if you do a different country as well. That adds a whole other level of complexity on top of all of that. <laughs> mm. But yeah, yeah, don't panic. Um, like Warren said, like you might not jump into something straight away, but that's fine. Like just keep creating. Um, as long as you feel like you are you are working towards your goal, right? Um, mm. My thing, like if it comes, like work, work will come. It's not gonna. Yeah, and no one's not gonna find you, like. Yeah, and just don't worry about it. Really, there's such a stigma about our degrees. Like I always, for the first while, I always felt such. I should should ne never should have, and no one should like shame or embarrassment to be leave uni and then not go straight into a graduate job because so many mm -hmm. others do. Because it was always you would work at, you work part time jobs after, and everyone's like, oh, so because I'm from Derry, I would be in England, and people would ask why I'm there, and then you explain to them you did a degree as an illustrator, and they're like, oh yeah, and you're kind of like, oh, you kind of yeah. think you're down on you or something, but don't worry about it, it does just take fucking time, and yeah, yeah. I, that's kind of my advice looking back, is that like, I was so worried about all the time seeing people create, and I wasn't creating, or what people would think, because I haven't got a job in it yet, or anything like that, it's pointless, like if you wanted enough, I mean, you're just going to get it eventually maybe yeah. not a month after maybe a year maybe two like just kind of keep at it pick whatever job you can like it's just worth even if you have to work part-time or in a job you don't like for two years just keep that design thing or something on the side that you know will be the relief from that crap work you don't want to do it's like you have that thing to look forward to and build on because you know that that's what you want to do i wouldn't yeah. just because it's so easy just to be like okay i'm not getting any responses and emails not getting any freelance jobs. I'm just going to pack it in. See, it's easily done, but the only thing stopping you from doing that is just, um, I don't know, just getting on with it. And it, like, who gives a fuck if your best friend's been doing Inktober 
every day <laughs> you want. and you give up five days in who's it for like are you doing it for yeah. yourself or are you doing it for instagram that's what you need to think like you you have to be doing it for yourself you need to, not social media or especially covid is really um really bad for seeing all these people being like oh look at all these amazing things i've been doing and in, in, in covid to make you feel guilty that you haven't illustrated a kid's book about whatever <laughs> yeah you shouldn't feel bad about it i mean geez take time man don't rush it, That's I know. it. yeah yeah no, i definitely agree with that like um you see i got so many friends who just post stuff constantly and it's yeah. And I think I must post stuff like once in a couple months, maybe, and not Same, because yeah. I just forget, or I, it's just I'm always on Instagram, but I just never, I never get around to posting. But everyone has a different process, you know, and and, and that, no, there's no right way to to be a designer. Um, and I mean, if you're just you just sketching or doing stuff like doing stupid comic, not stupid comics, but like I do like random little comics with my stepbrother, like stuff like that, like. That's the right. That's the right. Uh, yeah. Doing the right thing. Just find enjoyment in it, because I just find if I was just creating something for Instagram, I it wasn't fun. I wasn't enjoying it. If I was just making work to make work, then it's crap. It's not giving you any benefit. Just yeah, figure out what what you want to do and what works for you, and then just focus on that. I think. And don't listen to your lectures. So. <laughs> yeah. Dragon, dragon, dragon. <laughs> that's really good advice thank you um so in general i think that's probably it i didn't see any more questions in the chat um just like mel said uh are you do you guys have the chat open yeah i, I have it now it yep, nice. it. cool okay um yeah you you have articulated everything really good and yeah, it was really good. What's everyone thinking? <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, for um, yeah, fitness for all of your your work on this. Oh yeah. well, thank you so much for saying yes when we asked if you'd do it. Um, it was a big, big step, wasn't it? No, I'd always been looking like as like if, if I get asked to do a talk PCA, then I'm there. Yeah, <laughs> I've did something right. <laughs> yeah so yeah when i got the when the message i was like yes that's great. yeah i keep thinking like uh hopefully in like three or four years time yeah. like, they'll ask me back <laughs> yeah i'm glad it was in this format as well because if i had it here in the lecture hall i mean that would have been absolutely shocking oh yeah oh, 100 i would not yeah, have i'd have been soaking wet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite it's quite daunting but um <laughs> after the first initial one minute of like violently shaking it's fine yeah my notes were very sporadic and, and yeah i even went this out just for it i think i made that in third year the little i don't know if you've been the same thing you make little oh, notes no, you didn't to do that because no, no. Happen. <laughs> they'll have them <laughs> Caroline says that I'll still be here. Yeah, probably will be. <laughs> I'll be like, cool, I'm doing a doctor's now. <laughs> Didn't you say you're working on a book, Jess? Uh, the the tiger. cat. The tiger, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh yeah, Phil says, can he squeeze in some questions? So to James, did I imagine it or did you tell me that you swam the English Channel? <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I, w I want to. Uh, my, my dad did. Um, and I live in his shadow, um, uh, but he's, he constantly reminds me every day that he's a better swimmer than I am. And he, uh, but he does, he pushes all, all me and my, my brother and sister. He wants to swim as much as he does. Um, so I hope maybe one day I'll do a channel, but I, I don't, it's, it's, I'm just terrified of uh, be a lockdown. Of, like, jellyfish. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Cool. And Warren, do you get to have any involvement with the brewing side of things at work? Um, it's definitely an option. Like, you are allowed to, if you want, go and learn these things. But I don't know, because I'm always just so caught up on my own side of work. I find it hard to be like, I'll just dedicate some time to this as well. Because I'm always like, OK, this piece is done. What's next? What's next? Like, I'm always in my head about these things. So I rarely leave any time 
for anything other than that. But brewing process, it would be, I do, the only thing I get to taste the, the beer through the different stages, which is fun. Like that's kind of my only involvement with that. But um, all those beer names sound absolutely horrible. Um, <laughs> but no, it's like in day one when you get inducted, like it's the first time I'd seen, because I literally work at, like we're just our office is upstairs from the brewery. It's all the one one thing. So I mean, it's you finish work any day and you can go downstairs and you're at the bar or the breweries next door. So you do get to go and see it all, which is fun. But um, I'm, I've never been part of the actual brewing process because I mean, I would just feel like I'm in the way all the time. I'm just useless at anything that's like generic cliche man work. If someone's like, oh yeah, you can probably hammer this, it's going to be like, no, I fucking can't. <laughs> <laughs> lift that lift that bag of hops over there with your little one beyond it's good and then, yeah. Yeah. well thank you so much this is, this is the session